Well, hello and welcome to the spot, the podcast for Spotlight Publishing House. My name is Becky Norwood. I have worked with many, many authors to bring their books, their magic, their storytelling, all the things that they are doing, their expertise to the world in powerful ways by the pages of their book. I, my guest today is Paulette Ensign, and the name of her um, business is Tips Products Publishing Agents, Agency. Welcome, Paulette. Nice to have you Well, thank you, you, Becky. I just love talking with you. Oh, it's so cool, isn't it? It's really, really fun to to make the connections that we're able to make as we're as we're traversing this wonderful world we live in. So your business, Paulette, um, the Tips Products Publishing Agency, um, it, how did it start? I'm going to give you the most succinct version I can. This is the third uh, this is the third career that I've had as an adult and the first one was the only one I had paper for. I taught string instruments in public elementary schools. Wow. I then became a professional organizing consultant early in the industry. In the early 90s the sales cycle was getting longer and longer for consulting and speaking and I had formed these crazy habits called eating and paying the rent. <laughs> And I wasn't keen on breaking either of them. And the universe always provides. Someone walked past me with a tips booklet on improving your business communication skills. Now, I looked at that and very glibly, as a former East Coaster said, I could do one of those on organizing tips. Keep in mind a couple of things. I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I had no clue how to do any of the writing or the production. And I'm a firstborn. So that combination of elements was like, well, of course I'm going to figure it out. And I did. And uh, to this day, I have not found anyone who mirrors my core business. And here's the interesting thing that I love to share with people. Since I didn't know how, how to do any of it, it's even more remarkable to me that I can authentically say I personally sold well over 2 million copies of that same content in various languages and formats without spending a penny on advertising. Okay, so now you have our attention. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you did that very succinctly. And this is something that is a conversation with, with all the authors that I work with is a book is a magnificent tool for growing a business, to showcase your expertise, to, to show up as an influential impactor. However, how do you keep, how do you first capture the attention? How do you keep this, keep this book out front and center? How, there's a lot of big hows. Oh yeah, and, there definitely are. Yeah. And you know, yes, you can be speaking from the stage. You can create courses. You can do numerous other times having a podcast but there's a lot of lot that goes into this yeah so there let's, is <laughs> let's talk about what you do and and why i've brought you to this podcast and why we're we're gonna we're collaboration experts together um because what i see is a really amazing opportunity for authors to tap into something maybe that is just not known about and yet will help boost all the things that they're already doing. Most definitely. And when you said it takes a lot of thought, it also takes a lot of awareness because as I've said a couple of different ways already in our short time together so far, I had no formal training in any of what I've done in the past 33 years in this business. What I have had is uh, shoring up of my awareness and mindfulness, plus an extra ounce of courage and some real tenacity. Um, this was this was not something that was manna that came from heaven. You know, this was, hmm, I wonder, that seems like that might work. Uh, and tried it, and some most of the time it did. A lot of times it didn't. So this is not magic in the way of wishing, praying, hoping, and sprinkling pixie dust. Um, yeah, it takes ideas and it takes execution. So one of the things about books that I want to address immediately is this. Everything that you and I are going to talk about today from my experience in our uh, collaboration 
is an and, not an or. Correct. So anything you are doing to support your authors, Becky, if it's working, keep it going. And there's additional things that I want to bring to the conversation because people don't typically talk about what else. And that's my oxygen. That's where I live. Um, I live in the unknown of a lot of things. The thing about a book is that sometimes, and I would say more often than not, it's it's too too much too soon. When someone's coming to a nonfiction expert and somebody's coming for the first time exploring that information, it can be the risk of bringing something too much too soon. That's where all of these tips products that I've been uh, supporting authors with for all this time, for over three decades, lays a path, not only in allowing somebody to learn more thoroughly, easier, but it also is good business because in creating some ancillary products that are related to the topic, those are up for grabs. Those are sale items. And by the way, just to get things out of the way before anybody might want to get their calculator out and think 2 million copies, even if it was a dollar a piece, forget doing that math because when selling in bulk slash wholesale and or renting your content known as licensing, the per unit prices get to be much smaller than when you, uh, you're selling one unit of something at a retail price. That's not to say I've ever gone hungry or that I don't have a roof over my head. However, um, it's it's not that math that math calculation at all. And I threw in there something that is again a typically uh, a typical point of distinction with more traditional approaches on marketing and selling books compared to what I've done and my company has done during this time. After the very first year in business, and, and I don't think we've got that much time to be able to share some of the great stories that have been my learning process. Uh, but at any rate, after the first year, someone came to me and decided that they wanted to buy a large quantity, a few thousand copies of my booklet, and that they wanted to use it as that year's holiday greeting to their entire personal and professional contacts. That was a Friday afternoon. On Monday, I changed my business model 100%. And no longer could you buy only a single copy. Bulk sales was the only way to do it. And I've become very knowledgeable about how to do that, even as time has gone on and things have changed. So to stay current, yes, I'm there. That's that's the biggest thing. So what is a tip? Give me an example of what a tip is. And Sure, I'd be happy to. Is. And I mentioned that in my second career, I think I was a professional organizing consultant early in that industry. And I want to give you a tip that not only is um, not the cure to rockets, it's not the cure to cancer and it's not rocket science. However, it has saved lives. And here it is. Take the biggest thing out of the pile first. It immediately shrinks the pile and motivates you to keep going. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, very intelligent friends and colleagues of mine just never thought of that. And that makes the point, too, that none of us knows everything any other person knows. We each have stuff. And we that and I'm not talking. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and when I was sharing that tip with people, they're going, oh, yeah. And by the way, that tip is relevant, whether you're talking about a pile of laundry with that big fluffy robe that just came out of the dryer. Take that out first. And all of a sudden you got stuff that's going to get folded and put away sooner than seven days out. Um, in your office, when you've got a pile, that's just about to avalanche of paper or of other mixed things in there. Take the biggest thing out of the pile first. So and that's a, a very, too. <laughs> and when you're, yes, Absolutely you know, or determining which book you want to read next. <laughs> right, right, right. So when you put together a, you know, a tip, how do, how do you disperse it? I got a formula. I'm going to save you on this one, <laughs> Becky. I got a formula and it goes like this. 
Start one sentence with a positive verb, an action word, telling the reader or listener what to do. A second sentence explains why or how. Now, Becky, I got to tell you, again, even the most knowledgeable, well-educated, multi, multi-degreed multi people, when I see manuscripts coming back in with the word don't, avoid, <laughs> that's not a positive verb. What do you want the person to do? So when they say, don't forget, well, you want them to remember. That's a positive verb. And there's reasons for it. It's not just I got a bug up someplace and, you know, I decided I'm going to coin some formula. In fact, I noticed the formula after the fact. <laughs> and I went, oh, I seem to be writing this in a formula. And by the way, the tip with those two sentences, just two sentences, one that starts that is the the directive of what to do and a second sentence explaining why or how total of those two sentences maximum 50 words 50 50 words there's time for expansion of concepts in lots of other delivery formats whether it's a more narrative one with audio whether it's a longer explanation in books and that has to do both with the learning style and with how new they are to your information. You know, if somebody, you were at a social event and the inevitable question comes up, of, well, what do you do? Always. And there's, yeah, always, right? And there's this half circle of, I don't know, maybe six or eight people standing in front of somebody who's ready to say what they do. And it's a financial planner who says, I am writing a book right now on every single investment product that I can think of that exists now. I and a very book. proudly, <laughs> right. And you see one by one, each person as gracefully as they can excusing themselves because their silent conversation is, I barely know how to enter my deposits and withdrawals in my checking checkbook recorder. And they know they should be learning about investment, but they don't. Too and much they don't too want to soon. Be the embarrassment of saying, I don't know. How to That's do that. right. Exactly. You know, this is again on <clears> another <throat> level. If when any of us met someone who we thought we liked and maybe even ended up marrying, and at that first meeting, one of the two of you just gives every detail of your history the good, the bad, the ugly, the moral, legal, and ethical, or best two out of three. If you're getting too much too soon, it's not usually compelling. No, typically it's, we walk away. Yeah, exactly. That's the last thing you see is the back of their head or yours. So less is more, which is one of the biggest challenges that all of these subject matter experts and thought leaders that I'm very fortunate to deal with, they get concerned. I'm not giving enough. However, the three values that a tip can have that's really crucial as a guiding line that first of all, it can be brand new information. Second of all, it could be information that somebody knew and forgot. Third one, and I love this, it could be that you are getting confirmation from an expert that what you already know, and you stick your big old chest out there and go, I know something that that expert just said. That stuff's valuable and it builds trust. So then once folks have learned and absorbed that, <clears throat> they can then go back and go, I wonder what else they've got. Now that's good business. And at a certain point, yes, the book is the right thing to bring in. I had a client years ago who was a rabbi who was um, trained, extended training in grief counseling. And he came to me and he said he wanted to write a book on when death visits a Jewish home. And I said, Mel, that's not the time that that group of people can read a book. What they want is protocol, they want steps. There couldn't be a more ideal format than a tips booklet for that. Go to everything, any any vendor that's involved in the process of mourning after the someone has lost somebody in their family and sell them in bulk. A year later, go back to those same vendors and sell your book in bulk so that they can stay in contact with the families and give out that book as a thank you for your business. 
So that's an example that right. is really helpful, I think, in <clears throat> identifying, well, what the heck do we do with these things? Right. So you're talking more about, at this point of the conversation, you're speaking more about before that book gets published, maybe while it's still in editing, you're doing something with a book with your tips. Yes. Um, yes. That prepares and lays the groundwork for That's right. people that are going to read the entire book. So exactly. explain that process. I'm, you know, my book is in editing or it's off to design now. Um, I am trying to get people interested in what my book is, uh, mm -hmm. is all about. Mm -hmm. Take us on that scenario. Sure. When the book is not yet done and there's still stuff that can be done to it, the more astute book advisors and counselors, and I'm making that a generic um, heading, a lot of the more astute people that I've met who are guiding their, their book authors, they will say, let's put into your book an invitation for the reader to go back to your website to get something free, whether it is some tips, whether it is an article, whether whatever it is. And the best place is to put that invitation starts at as early in the book as you can. Because when your book is on Amazon, you can, um, in many cases, see a preview of the book. And on one of those pages, maybe it's the copyright page, maybe it's an, a blank page at the beginning. You can put that invitation. And even if the person doesn't buy your book, they're going to go back to your website. And why going back to your website is so important is that unless you figure out some way to connect with the person who's thinking about buying your book or is buying your book already. You have no idea who they are. No, not not with our publishing realm the way it is. You have no idea exactly. who's buying your book. And I've been amazed at how many folks that never occurred to them. And why is it that you want to know who they are so that you can help them more? You have other forms of addressing the content that appeals to them. So this is a way that is legal, moral, and ethical to make a connection, to invite them to come to your website in exchange for their email address, you're going to give them a gift. Mm -hmm. Then you've got access to them. So that's one of many ways. If your book is already done, you could still go back and do that. It will not be a second mortgage that a graphic designer would need to go in there. Or you could create a whole new product of a tips booklet and put that onto Amazon. So a tips booklet, how can it be um, um, maybe distributed with the greatest impact? Well, that, that's a loaded question, the way you put it, as far as the greatest <laughs> impact is concerned. And I think you knew that when you set it up. Um, gift with purchase is something, is a model that has been around for eons. And once you've identified who your audience really is, and that you're either taking things out of the book and putting them in those tips in the format that I mentioned, or or any other way that you are putting together uh, the use of the tips. Gift with purchase is one of the more easily recognizable, longest um, ways of getting something out there. Now keep in mind, that means it's the decision maker is not going to be the end user. The buyer is not going to be the end user. However, there is money for that that bulk sale decision maker to be made. No question about that. Uh, there's lots and lots of other ways I mentioned already. Use it as the holiday greeting or any other holiday in the course of the year where you can send it out for Thanksgiving. We're thankful for your, your business or valentine's day we love you to pieces and we're giving you this gift i mean there's just endless, endless. ways yeah. to you know to for those to, those hooks those promotional hooks to be used um and it can be some of the most benign things you know we're moving into a new area and we want to introduce ourselves come in and say hello and we'll give you a gift banks remember banks used to give out gifts when you opened an account Mm, Same yes. thing can happen here. Right, right. 
So how can these be used? Um, <clears throat> and by to... the way, online or offline, everything that we've got, right. is that where you were going? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Becky, this is fascinating. We're starting to finish each other's sentences. <laughs> I love it. Um, great minds here. The everything that we do, with rare exceptions, can be can be done as an offline and an online product. It can be pixels or print. And at one point, it was funny because I thought we, we did a jigsaw puzzle as uh, an expansion of the product line for a children's book author. Uh, one of our clients, actually, when COVID started, we were smack dab in the middle of, of being ready to approach the large quantity buyers, the wholesale buyers. Nobody wanted to talk to us, though. They had budget, but there was too much unknown. But at any rate, we had done a jigsaw puzzle for her as one of the products to be sold. And it was from the artwork of her book, which was beautiful. I didn't realize until recently when I was sharing this information with somebody that apparently there's a site someplace and I have it in my, my notes uh, from that era where you can do jigsaw puzzles online. <laughs> We've done crossword oh, puzzles where wow. the tips are the, the clues to the puzzle. We've done all kinds of ways of repurposing the content other than taking a chapter of the book at a time and giving it out. Now, I don't say that it disparagingly in any remote way. It's just those things have become more uh, traditional and I really embrace my uniqueness. And those Absolutely. are the folks that, you know, those folks that come to work with us and play with us because I think you already know by now that I've got a pretty decent sense of humor and <laughs> uh, applied as appropriate. So we do have a good time putting these possibilities out there. And when I mentioned at the outset of our conversation today about being aware, I wanna give you a very quick example because this is the stuff that in general in life that mindfulness and awareness really can reap gigantic rewards. Right. During COVID, I had to clean my brain out one day as far as just coming up for air. And I was scrolling through Facebook and I noticed one, one frame, there was his bed full of socks. And I went, and, and the person who, <laughs> whose site it was, was kind of a dorky kind of a person, but, you know, very lovable and generous and means well, and was living with life partner for an extended period of time. And apparently from that earliest moment, any time that there was an orphan sock that came out of the dryer, she would throw it into a bucket. Well, that day she was bored and she upended the bucket and spread them all out. And I said, gee, if those socks could only talk. And the light bulb went on over my head. And they can. Now, I have not ever been fortunate to be a mother as far as bringing new people to the planet. However, I've nurtured a lot of people and taught elementary school kids string instruments. So children, you know, are, are not totally removed from me. <laughs> sock puppets. Sock puppets, those socks can become. And that was the first activity for my client in a free activity club during COVID that was going to be able to expand her email list so that when COVID lifted, we could go look for corporate sales and corporate sponsors. So, you know, you just never know what you're going to notice and how you can flip it a way or two. So what I was highly judgmental about being dorky turned into something that was very utilitarian. There's in the sky's the limit truly, as far as the, the creativity that- And it's that just how we're wired, required. you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's going to see something and process it the way I did. Somebody else is going to look right past it and go, oh, man, they got a lot of orphan socks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh. um, so you, it's interesting how um, the different formats that you can use, from puzzles to sock puppets to all the other different ways, how do you get it to market? 
and actually make money with, with these things. Yes, um, and a, a lot of it, a lot of it. The the folks who tend to be the large quantity buyers and the decision makers for uh, content licensing, renting the content, are going to be usually something having to do with a company's sales. So in the marketing department, as high up the ladder as you can reach somebody, or sales, or um, product development, where any, and that's not the only ones, but those are the ones that stick out and you know shine a bright light. They have budget and they have mindset. They need to have promotional items, gift with purchase, something to incent on a one on a solopreneur basis. We give out some kind of bonus for signing up for our newsletter. It's that concept. Anything any of us would do in small business, amplify that and get paid for it. So anything we might be thinking about, about adding a bonus onto whether it's enrolling in a course which we're offering or signing up for our newsletter, any of those things. When a company is wanting to shine a very bright light on a new product or process or cause, they're going to incent people by saying, we'll give you this free gift. So the decision maker, and this is one of the more fun things that I, I became aware of, We've many of us deal in three and four digit numbers in the course of our day in business. And it's all about context. I sold a quarter of a million copies, a license for a quarter of a million copies of my booklet to a catalog company where they printed the booklet because they could buy print cheaper than I can sell it. And they offered it free with purchase in any one one issue of their catalog that year they were dropping 17 million catalogs that was a test for them and they were very generous in letting me know that they had a 13 percent sales increase as a result that they tracked back to that offer so yeah uh, i got had a five digit amount of money that i made on that deal and that was one of my first deals so i was really you know a babe on that one and it worked out great. That's awesome. That is truly yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So your message then to those that are bringing a book to the world, and I think of all the kind of my mind's going back over all the authors that I have had the privilege of serving and how this could serve them to really help mm -hmm. them get that message out. Because every author that I've worked with works really, really hard to get the mm -hmm. message out there. There's a mm -hmm. lot of time and effort that goes into that. And sometimes they get, you know, a little discouraged with the process of it. Sure. Um, because it is the time, the time right. that it takes. So explain um, kind of the process when somebody comes to you. If I was to refer an author to you, what is your process in working with them? Thank you for asking that question. It's easier than I have might have made it sound during our conversation right now, because one thing I want to point out, you and I decided that we would chat today to share the the broad scope of what's possible. Absolutely. And I want that to be more informative than overwhelming, because we do one thing at a time. <laughs> and that those that, you know, I didn't come out of my mother knowing everything I know today about what I share with people. And the same is true in any of our learning phases mm -hmm, and processes. Absolutely. The starting point is always, go in my, my processing, is always going to start with a 52 tip manuscript of tips related to whatever the content is, the expertise is reflecting. That's perfect. And more often than not, people don't realize they're already giving the tips away free. Right. Now we're going to put a price tag on it. You know, if you're at a speaking engagement, if you're talking to a prospect while you are consulting, you're giving those free tips away. And now we're going to capture them with a net and we're going to see what's in the hard drive between your ears. That's already planted there. It's not going to be a new research project. And the fabulous thing is once that 52 tip manuscript is done, and that I help educate you about the many ways 
that it can be sold and rented. And I keep making reference to that. That 52 tip manuscript, before it even looks pretty from the graphic designer, is a saleable product. There can be companies or associations who've already got their email vehicle set up and it's a matter of putting that content and scheduling it. So for instance, a drip a tip, drip a tip a week is something that certain companies and associations find very valuable because it's not with their hand out every time they reach out to any one of their lists, their customers or their prospects or whatever, whatever discrete list that they want to pump up. And at that point, you can make money from that content without graphics, without a whole lot of, without any production at all, and make multiples back of whatever your investment has been in playing in the sandbox with my company. And then we send them back to you, Becky, because those tips can be an outline for the book. It can be an enhancement within the pages of the book. It can be a workbook. And it can be you all mean, kinds of, of things. Yeah, yeah. So because you and I are so aligned with how we look at serving our, our folks, this is, you know, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. I mean, first of all, it's you and me, Becky. Second of all, <laughs> <laughs> second of all, with our minds and our experiences, you know, we're we're here to help and we're not from the government. Um, we really truly are. And at a pace that works for the client. That is awesome. The author. That's <clears throat> crucial. But we need to wind up our conversation today. And I have really enjoyed this. And I think our listeners will have gained a tremendous amount where I can just see the light bulb going. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Um, but this is why, you know, the collaboration that we ha have, <clears throat> we're coming together with and being able to, to show authors that there's so many other ways to get that message yes. out to the world and in really valuable ways. And it's not going to break the bank. Um, and will yield some amazing results for the actual ultimately the sale of their book and maybe their course and you know the the other things that they that they're bringing to the world and i have these conversations every day with the authors i'm sure um so this is a really good opportunity to help kind of turn those light bulbs on and and yeah. open the the realm of possibility so we thank you for for being here today for this podcast this is Paulette and sign with tipsproducts.com. And um we'll have some links in the in the um the the show notes. But take the time to really give this some thought. Reach out to either myself or Paulette. And um, you know, really let's explore the the world of possibility with this. So this is Becky Norwood and Paulette and Sign. I'm with um Spotlight Publishing House. Check us out and and Keep your eyes and ears open and your and your heart open to the world of possibilities. With that, we thank you. <laughs>